Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to install Clippers Exclude Object and Adaptive Mesh. We're going to be working with this Ender 3 Pro. This machine is running a Revo CR Hotten, adjustable bed probe, and printing on Gearlight G10. Before we get started, guys, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turn on your notification bell, and leave me some comments. I love reading the comments and do my best to get back to you guys. As soon as I see them, the first thing we need to do is head over to machine icon in your clipper session. And one thing you want to do here is you want to update all components. And yeah, 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 okay, I know the risks, go. And this may take a few minutes. Once the update is complete, you may need to click on this Try Again button. Select Close. It will restart one more time. And now we're all up to date. I'm going to include this little help file in the video description so you guys can use this. It's kind of like a little cheat sheet. Keep me on task. Let's follow along here. All right, so we already did the update. And there's two URLs here that I found very helpful when I was configuring this for myself. Uh, both of them are linked here. First one is the exclude object. And this just gives you some quick instructions on how to do this. Now, if you guys are using Cura, you don't have to worry about this because uh, Cura enables this by default. But if you're using uh, Prusa Slicer or other slicers built off of Prusa Slicer, you may need to uh, follow along this section. So I'm going to skip this for now. And we're just going to jump over here to the uh, file manager part and make sure that that's selected as true. So to do that, we're going to head over to our machine. Click on the moonraker.conf. And what we're looking for here is file manager. And under here, there's enable object processing. It's currently set at false. So we want to change this to true. And anytime you make a change in any of these files, you want to save and restart. And if you get this little dialog box, just click try again. Next thing we want to do is head over to the printer.cfg. And I already have it in here, but if you don't have this uh, line included, you need to add this, and that's exclude object. Okay, since I got that there, I'm just going to go to the next step. This step here tells us that Cura labels these objects by default, so we don't have to do anything there. Next thing is we're going to head over to the Adaptive Mesh GitHub. And this kind of gives you an overview of what this does. And this set of tools does more than just the Adaptive Meshing. Also do an Adaptive Purge. In my case, I'm happy with my Purge sequence, so I'm not going to mess with that. But this gives you the details on how to do just that. So let's get into installing Camp. So you want to come over to this section here that talks about installation. And we're going to uh, select each one of these lines one at a time. So let's open up a putty and log in. So for me, it's E3 Pro Revo. And you can type the host name that you gave your Raspberry Pi or CB1 to uh, get into your putty session. If you don't know, your host name, then you can always use the wireless network watcher to find out what the IP address is. But if you want to use the host name, all you got to do is just type in the host name and click open. The default login is PI, followed by any password that you might have set. If you didn't set a password, the default Raspberry Pi password is uh, Raspberry all lowercase 
And if you're doing this on a CB1, the login for the CB1 is BIQU, and the default password is also BIQU. I changed my password, so in this case, I'm going to type it in. Once you're in here, we're going to follow the steps uh, either in the page behind it, or in this case, we're just going to use this little cheat sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up a little bit. And uh, we're going to start with this Git clone line. I'm just going to select it. Right click to copy. And then just right click uh, on the uh, putty session and it will paste it. Press the enter key. Once that's done, we're going to select the next line. Again, right click to copy. Right click to paste. Enter. Select the next line. Copy, paste, enter. And now we're going to minimize this for now and let's go back to our clipper session. And we're going to get out of here and we're going to open up uh, Moonraker. So moonraker.conf. And in here, we're going to add, I'm going to add it right underneath this. Let's see. Actually, we could put it down here. Uh, so down here, it's got the different uh, features and like uh, adding the update manager to it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to enter twice at the very bottom. And you want to copy this set of lines right here, this whole thing. Right click, copy. And then I'm going to come down here to line number 92, which I added. I'm going to press Control V to paste it. And again, anytime that you do anything in Moonraker, you need to save and restart. Click try again. All right, now let's go to the next step. Now we need to open the campsettings.cfg. And in this section, we're going to enable the features that we want. So I'm not going to bother with the line purge or war on purge or smart park because I'm not interested in these features. If you want to enable these features, just continue to look at the GitHub regarding these features and exactly what they do and how to configure them. For now, I'm just going to remove this hashtag here on include camp adaptive mesh. I don't need to change any of the defaults. I'm going to leave them as is. Save and restart. Once the restart is done, we're going to go to the next step, which is open the printer.cfg. And we're going to include the next line. So we need to copy this here where it says include camp underscore settings dot config. And we can add that right underneath here. Actually, I'll back this up one. I'm going to put it right after the exclude object. So I'm going to scroll to the end of this line, press the enter key, control V to paste. Backspace one, okay. Click save and restart. All right, and lastly, we need to open up Cura. Head over to manage printers. You can do it by either clicking this. Uh, Little uh, printer tab here, or up at the top, you can go to settings, printer, manage printers. And I'm going to get this a little bit out of the way. We'll move this over to the left. And you want to click on where it says machine settings. Okay. 
and we're going to insert the following three lines on the bottom here. Right click, copy. And now this part's very important. If there's any mesh data loaded in here, uh, we need to remove it. So this is from the previous mesh that I had done uh, at an earlier time, and I was just recalling it here in the start G code. But since we're going to be creating a new mesh every print, we need to get rid of that old entry. And then now this other part is also very important. We want to make sure that the bed is totally heated before we uh, probe for this adaptive mesh. So what I'm going to do is uh, under here where it says, uh, it says here, wait for heated bed. So under the M190, I'm going to put my cursor right in front of this G92, which is the next line. I'm going to press the Enter key. And then I'm going to select the line in between. I'm going to right click or Control V to paste. So what this is going to do is it's going to home the printer. It's going to park the print head. It's going to warm up the bed. And then after that, it's going to clear any previous bed mesh that's stored in memory. And then create a new mesh. And now the mesh that it's going to create is going to be the adaptive mesh. So it's not going to take up the entire uh, build plate. It's only going to create a mesh in the area where you're going to print. So this is uh, awesome because you can create a fresh mesh. You don't have to wait forever. And it's going to be concentrated only in the area where you're going to print. So another thing that I like to do, once you're finished here, uh, click close. Another thing that I want that I like to do is go back to the printer.cfg. And in here, increase the probe count. So my previous probe count was 9 by 9. So now I want 13 by 13. Since it's going to be a small area where I'm going to be printing, I want the highest concentration of probe points in that area. And a 13 by 13 is perfect if you're going to be probing a small area. If you're going to be doing the whole bed, then it'll take a little bit of time. But you're going to get a very accurate bed mesh. If you made any changes here, let's save and restart. Head back to Cura and load a couple of models. Spread these apart a little bit. About that much is good. Okay, slice it and send it to the printer. All right, so first I'm going to show you guys how the adaptive mesh works. Let me move the camera over to the printer so we can see what's going on over there. Now that we're configured with adaptive mesh, what Clipper is going to do is create a very concentrated grid right underneath the area where the print is going to occur. So the advantage here is it saves time, produces an extremely accurate first layer. Looking at it here in the uh, Clipper Height Map tab, we can see the grid points that it created. Very concentrated, only in the area where we're going to print. Now let's take a look at Exclude Object. Once the print starts, you'll notice the print head moving between the two sides. If we go back to the dashboard, you'll notice there's a new icon here next to the pause button. This is the exclude objects feature. And you'll notice the highlighted box will switch between the two sides. This is the current position of the print head. If during the course of a print, you notice that something is uh, going wrong. So let's say we wanted to end this one on the right. Just select exclude object. 
and that one will be skipped. So the print will continue only with the one on the left. In my case, everything looks good, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Now let's go back and see what the uh, how the print turns out. All right, let's check these things out. I got a couple of super clean looking prints. Awesome. All right, guys, so there you got a couple of real powerful tools for Clipper. If you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing. Turn on your notification bell and leave some comments. I love reading the comments and do my best to get back to you guys as soon as I see them. All right, guys, this video is a wrap. We'll catch you in the next one. Take care.